we are continuing to expose this underground third temple, this synagogue. Hopefully you've watched the previous video. We've shown you the assembly of the 70 elders. This is uh, the underground synagogue right next to the western wall. That's the western wall right there. There's an altar. There's seats for 70 and seats for 24, perfectly described in Ezekiel chapter 8. If you don't know what we're talking about, watch the previous video. Now, here we have the altar. We're going to um, get a description from a tour guide about what that is. They're calling it a pomegranate. It's very strange. We, of course, have this altar. This was dedicated Hanukkah last year, and then this year they dedicated the altar. So the third temple is already um, dedicated. The altar is already dedicated. Not only that, we're going to see various rooms and facilities that are components of the third temple that are already built. They're just underground. And we've shown you the plans by the Temple Institute to make a Sanhedrin council. Well, they've already built it. It's this, perfectly fulfilling Ezekiel chapter 8. And we're going to show you other chambers and rooms and dining halls and mikvahs built underground next to the Western Wall. But here's the tour. So we are standing under the only flat ceiling that there is here. Who asked me about the round? Come here. This is a pomegranate. I don't know what Gersh is so to, but this is a pomegranate. This is the art that holds the Torah scroll. It's, it's made of Hebrew letters all around. Uh, white, white pomegranates, one of the very famous fruits that was on the Smashwood that just bought a pomegranate in uh, the Shuk Machan that went in Hilo, that's 2.2 pounds for one pomegranate. There was one, that one, and the big one. Okay, here is this altar. They called it a bima, and you heard her describe it a little bit as a pomegranate, but we also saw the altar dedication. But let's take a look um, at this altar. We're going to try and give you the best views of it. Here it is with the kind of replica sea of glass next to it. Okay, this is what you see in Ezekiel chapter 1. There was a crystallite. So they're mimic, mimicking uh, things around the throne. Another view where you can see above the plastic, and then we'll show you another uh, trip we made, and there was a lot of flooding here. So the water was coming down, and it was trickling down, and the floor uh, filled up with water, and there was uh, maintenance there cleaning it out. <laughs> mm. Okay, so where would the bridge be? On this side, you can see the back of the arch and the different colors and all these arches. Again, this was the bridge, this was the sky, the sun. It was inaugurated last year on Hanukkah. Just one little problem. It rains in here. You see that? That's it's exquisitely furnished. That's the onyx, the islands that you see there. Mm. Um, it's an excess of gold in the furniture. Okay, here it is the synagogue above us. You can see a menorah and the ball. And let's take a look at the other side. Okay, and here's the other uh, view of the synagogue. And the other view of the uh, new synagogue. And here is the menorah. Menorah. Okay. 
Okay, we're at the location where they dedicated the altar against this wall. This is the location of the pavement stones, Gabatha Judgment Seat, and they have left behind a piece of the altar. How strange. This is aerated concrete. You can see with my hand, it's not heavy. You can, you know, pick it up. Um, and they left this piece behind, like a cube. Uh, weird, weird, weird circumstances. <laughs> Okay, I had to throw that in. Now, what we had there, guys, we were part of the, we were part witnessing this altar dedication that took place on the Jewish last day of Hanukkah, and there were pieces of it they left behind. I had to show you this in the footage. These little blocks, that's what I just showed you. So uh, they dedicated the altar. This was Hanukkah, and that whole other Sanhedrin council they dedicated last year, this whole synagogue. You can see this is a Hanukkah. It's got nine uh, we've shown you this, but the synagogue and everything we've just shown you is a pattern of something they had in the temple. A room like this, they're not exactly certain, but something like this to where you have a circular pattern of seating of 70 elders. You have two scribe tables, and then you had the students of law, okay? And uh, these are probably the students of law or the 24 elders. So all that is in this uh, synagogue, okay? Even in this photograph, we can see the circular pattern, the scribe table, and then back behind this, this area over here, there was 24. So all this is the pattern of what they said they would build and they have, okay? Again, other views of this that we've shown you. Then we come to something else which is this. Um, beneath the western wall underground there are entire facilities, dining halls and rooms, uh, ritual baths all underneath this area in the western wall. This is all, you just walk by this in the tour, you just walk by, you'll, sh you'll see it when I saw it, I got some video, and it's just astonishing. Um, this was all debris that was piled up to the ceiling and they cleared it out and oh how convenient we have a place for the third temple underground <laughs> i mean that's what's going on guys huge uh long long dining hall that we have here all right so let's take a look okay is everybody here okay so before we Okay, amazing, more amazing views of the Western Wall hidden tour. Okay, at the end there, you could see these uh, monitors and these uh, students of law. Remember we showed you before the students of law and the Temple Institute's plans for the synagogue. Here you can see here this, you can see it's even green, just like the monitors. Uh, seats for the students of law. Uh, we showed you this whole architectural design for the Sanhedrin Council in the other video. But these are other things that we found that were part of this facility underground. So this is all part of the uh, students of law, okay? And this is, this is built, this is happening all underground in the uh, Western Wall area, various uh, rooms and things underground that have this. Okay, we've shown you this. Uh, we're gonna get to this in a second. Now we're gonna take a look at this. What this is, guys, this is something called a ritual bath mikvah. Now, this is a place that the priests would go in and they would wash with water um, as part of ritual purity. It's where we get, in modern times, baptism. Um, the ideas of baptism came in the priests in the temple. Now, there are some of these which we can see is operational. You can see this is an operational mikvah. You can go in this and you can go into the water. And let's look at the video of that. Mikvah, operational, tables. 
And there are other mikvahs which are old, which are part of the kind of description of the tourist um, aspects of the underground tours. And so this is not an operational mikvah, but this is another example of something that's found in that area where the, you would walk down and wash. Okay, so this one they're not using as an operational part of the temple like the other ones, but um, we'll show you some um, part of the tour. So some of this is part of the just the tours that you see, but some of it's actually operational as part of the rooms, chambers, and kitchens in the temple. Or like this in Jerusalem, this one, one in the Davidson Center, one in the city of David, and one up in the Jewish border. It's, it's very unique because it's a mikvah, first of all it's shallow, but it's a mikvah that has staircases all the way around. It's not just up, down and up, like the one here, you can see the staircase all the way around. Now this is something very unusual. All right, we also have this other interesting feature. Underground, next to the Western Wall, you're, you'll listen to the tour guide. Pay close attention to what he says. A lot of what happens in these excavations, there's, there's a nonprofit organization that has a clear goal in setting up the Third Temple. Um, it's not a objective view. Um, they want to build a temple. They will only want Jewish history. Anything else, they're not interested in. And you can hear that type of um, influence in what they've found in this recent discovery. So just like we've shown you the Sanhedrin has this circular uh, pattern, he's going to say the same thing, that this is something that's part of the Sanhedrin next to the, the, the temple, but clearly it's very Roman in nature. And um, and anyway, it's, a, it's very, very interesting. So all this digging, notice all this digging is happening underground. Look at, you'll see in the views how high it goes. And it's so convenient. It's like, oh, we have this whole place underground to build the temple. And, you know, who knows what they're going to use this for next. I've shown you everything else um, as it relates to the synagogue, okay? But we'll watch. So we'll keep watching. So next week, it turned out to be, it took six months longer to excavate this, and nobody could say anything. It was a very unique find, not just in the city, but in the world. So what is it? Any ideas? Okay. They, you, an aqueduct, because of the drainage channel, right? The drainage channel is part of a whole drainage system to drain water away from the western wall. We know it's here. You can walk it up from the city of David, taking water away so the walls don't get undermined. Okay? But here, let's take the idea of a semicircle. Here, remains of bleachers where people would sit. We also have it under here. Here, it doesn't exist. So, and if we look back, each corner, corner on the, uh, the right, the corner on the left may have been the be beginnings of a stage. The holes may have been here, and so that's a, a very complicated thing. And maybe I'll say a word at the, just at the end when we finish here. So the idea of a theater, or one, another idea, because they, before they even were able to date it, to tentatively date it, there's another idea that at the very end of this period, what's known as the Second Temple period, like in the early first century, the Jewish court of law, known as the Sanhedrin, which used to be up here, had to move somewhere. They don't exactly say where. They sat in a semicircle, 70 judges, and you had the president and the chief justice on either side, so some people, some archaeologists thought to say, wait a minute, it's not a complete state. It's one, it's two different people and a, and a very big seating arrangement. Maybe it's the sun hitting. More and more earth was taken out. They found more and more evidence from pottery and also from, more recently, Jerusalem is undergoing a revolution in archaeology by using carbon dating, which wasn't used so much in the past. So that's a big thing. So, 
most of the evidence, archaeological evidence, points to the second century. And if that's the case, either it's a very small theater, the smallest in the country that they found so far, or it could very well be the seat of the city council. And what the, the period of Jerusalem uh, during Hadrian's time called Elia Capitolina. The jury is still out. Two motivations for doing this dig before they even discovered this were number one, that's the highest priority. Learning more about the Western world. Number two, you can see right where I'm standing. To my left, the stones are very, very large. To my right, they're much smaller. So that they saw right away when they began, because they were up, we started up above. I said, wait a minute. This really means that the bridge was built in two different phases. But I'm not going to go into the whole story of the bridge. We'll see part of it, and you'll understand it a little bit better when we come out. So we're going to go out. Okay, here's another one. This uh, another room showing the uh, conference, little small conference room, small, small assembly room. You can see this one. It has a, a monitor. You can do video presentations, and all this is underground. Okay, various chambers, things for uh, training, things for the priests. Um, you know, all this is underground, guys. Okay, we showed you that one. That's a mikvah. And then we have this. <laughs> okay, this is something I'm going to, I'm going to, I could talk a lot about this. But if you haven't seen this, this is called a temple shekel. And this goes back to the time of Moses and something called the shekel of the sanctuary. And this they've made to commemorate uh, Donald Trump and the moving of the U.S. Embassy. So they made something called a temple coin. All right. And um, what does it say? Like doves in their nest. Uh, it's quoting Isaiah 60, verse 8. It's written, looks like in Arabic, Hebrew, and English. And it has Donald Trump on it and Cyrus. Then it says, to fulfill 70 years. They have the seal of United States and Persia, the Persian Empire. So what happened is King Cyrus um, defeated the Babylonians, and when he did, he allotted for the building of the temple. And so there was a Cyrus decree that issued the building of the temple. Now what happened, if we go back in the history of how this works, guys, it's a very um, deep and profound um, understanding here, but... When Moses gathered the children of Israel to build the tabernacle, they did something called the shekel of the sanctuary. And every man gave a shekel. It was actually something called a half shekel or a bika in Hebrew. And they gave that as a redemption. Now, what they're saying is that Donald Trump is a modern day Cyrus. And let me tell you, no, he's not. Just as much as this whole temple is not for the Most High God, this is for the Antichrist, okay? The son of perdition who will sit and call in this place and call himself God, okay? But they issued this coin after Donald Trump did this, this uh, fake Cyrus decree, moving the embassy, okay? Now, how this works is they gave a coin as part of a census, okay? And, and every man gave a half a coin, and then all those coins were added up and placed into gold that went into building the temple. So what's happening is the beast is doing the same thing. Okay, sure, you got peace and doves and all this, but this is the beast that's building this. this the beast is building this temple for the son of perdition. Okay. And all of those that are part of this, that are in on this, are part of this false census. It's called the mark of the beast. So that's you're actually looking at the mark of the beast. That's this coin. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and get one of these and show it to you <laughs> and do a no whole other teaching on this. But this is what happened uh, when they, they started making this coin last year as part of the temple. So guys, Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. Okay. We have this coin. We have this uh, temple shekel, they're calling it, 
all right? And this is, this is going on. Now, this is the B system. This is not, you know, from the Most High God, but this is, uh, you know, things that we have, guys, underground, mikvahs, ritual baths, um, dining halls, assembly halls, okay? Many assembly halls, um, many uh, huge dining halls, huge function rooms. All of this is taking place underground, okay? A whole synagogue, okay? It says that Jesus appeared before the synagogue and the temple. So there was, there was a synagogue, okay, and a temple. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at this thing underground fulfilling the scriptures, okay? Now, they're doing this. They have not rece received um, Yeshua as the Messiah. And that's what he said. He said, another will you receive, okay? And so they're, they're building all this for the other. And we know that to be the beast of Revelation chapter 13. So, guys, uh, thanks for watching. And... Um, Please watch the other video. We talked about the altar, and we talked about this hidden synagogue. And um, praise God for all this information, and may God bless you. Amen.